A very good morning. I'm glad you're still with us. It's uh, fast approaching the hour of 8 a.m. If you are just joining us, welcome on board. This is Morning at TV, and I'm Chris Higeni. You do find us at the Kickstarter segment. And uh, I do have uh, two gentlemen who are going to help us interrogate the police annual crime report that was released yesterday. The police has recorded what it's saying is a 1.5% decrease in the number of cases reported in the just released 2023 annual crimes report. Indication is that 228,074, that was the reduction from 231,653 in the previous year. On average, police received 19,004 cases every single day. Those are cases of crime. Much is highlighted in the report, and uh, I'm privileged to do have a copy with me here. We cannot read through it for the entirety of uh, the program, but I'm joined on set by uh, Timothy Chamonges, an associate director, a center for policy analysis, and uh, also with uh, Parliament Watch Uganda, and security expert, Dr. Tolit Atia, to help us understand what this means for you out there in terms of uh, internalizing the specifics of the report and how you should expect the year 2024 to go. There are cases including phone snatching, those are the ones you readily encounter. There are also aspects of uh, money that is lost due to false pretense. I'm sure if you are a person that is ambitious and have aspirations of becoming rich, you could have uh, found yourself in that kind of situation where you lost a bit of money to somebody who had very glossy and uh, very profitable adventures in which to put your money. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm trying to put this report into perspective that must be f well understood and appreciated, most importantly, by the people out there. But let me begin with uh, Mr. Timothy Chamonges. Uh, you are appearing on the show for the very first time, yes, at least yeah. with me on yes, set, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that is happening. You are Associate Director at the Center for Policy Analysis. What's your take when this report was outed yesterday? No, so first, I think that uh, this report is a form of accountability by the by police, the police. Uh, to the public mm. uh, in light of their role and uh, the responsibility that they are charged. Uh, okay. on. Yeah. And uh, looking at the figures that uh, the police presented yesterday, I think that uh, there's a sigh of relief in mm. light of uh, in light of what's happening in the country, specifically around crime, mm. but also provides us a picture on where we are at as far as. Um, as far as what our officers are doing. And, and I know they are doing a lot in terms of uh, ensuring that they protect, but also protect lives and, uh, and, uh, and property. Mm -hmm. um, my quick thoughts really was that um, although a report su such as this um, is, is, is the authoritative document that we can refer at any point in time in what's happening to the country mm -hmm. and benchmark that. In terms that of criminality. Absolutely, and benchmark that with the subsequent years to mm. understand where we are at. Mm. I think that uh, it also speaks to, the, to, to, the, to, to, the, to where we are at as far as the crime, but also adherence to the law is concerned. Mm. While there, there could be concerns regarding what the public feel mm. and what the report presents, because if you say that um, the, the, the crime rate has reduced by 1.5%, mm. that may be valid to the extent of what we are reporting. Yeah. But there is, there is a feeling of, uh, after the report engaging the different uh, groups, but also following the responses from the public, mm. you will definitely see that there are concerns and there is a bit of resistance toward that direction. That's right. And majority could be feeling that um, the crime rate is not going down but getting mm. worse uh, day by day. But of course, could be th there could be a number of factors contributing towards that uh, that that direction. Mm. But uh, the other, I think, would be looking at the the, the road crashes um, or the road crashes and the situation on our roads, which yeah. is which is which is appalling, mm. and it's um, unfounded it's on uh, traffic offenses, yeah, the, which the, are the, crimes. Traffic and, offenses. Yeah. Saying that we lose close to 13 people per day, which which is an average, if you, if you quantify that in a week, mm. it means that uh, each day we are losing 13 people. In a week, we could be losing up to 100 people, which means that if you are to dissect that in terms of uh, 
days. So if you yeah. have like average of 100 to 120 people dying, divide that by seven, it goes to around 13 mm. to 15, which is a huge number. And very and, huge. And unfortunately, majority are the, are the border border cyclists and, mm. the, and the pedestrians. So I think that, that there is need for efforts towards that direction, and it gives us a picture uh, of where we are at. My concern is on the economic and corruption cases. Mm. I know that uh, the police has, has highlighted that most of these, of course, is it's, to, it's to the extent that the public are responding to uh, and are uh, able to report. That's right. There could be a number of those that are not documented. Mm. Um, my, my concern is where we are at, because corruption is one of the core issues, at least if you look at uh, where we are at as a country, and informing where we are at today. Mm. You've seen IGG's report highlighting that we lose close to 10 trillion mm. annually annually to corrupt to cases, corrupt yeah. to corruption of course the, the police report broadens it to to, to both economic mm. and then their corruption cases but broadly speaking so you see that uh, th th there is a bit of more concern and the biggest concern is on the number of prosecution towards that direction mm. while there are a number of those that have been reported in terms yeah. of prosecution in terms of investigations there is a bit of uh, there, there is not much there's not a, mo a lot of results that we are realizing that and police could put f uh, forward some of the concerns and the challenges mm. that they are facing but it's an area of concern and i think that uh, this report um, gives us a good picture of where we are at mm. and we can only work towards improving that okay in mm. fact here it's uh, indicated the police uh, kind of regretting that uh, of the 859 billion mm. that was lost mm. only 80 <laughs> who was recovered. Absolutely. That's a paltry sum of money mm -hmm. and uh, it speaks to the fact that well they, they either the mechanisms of uh, ensuring that the follow-ups are done <coughs> are lacking or just simply pathetic mm -hmm. but we are not here to judge the police today we just want to understand exactly mm -hmm. what is happening to the country mm -hmm. in terms of uh, criminality. Now Dr. Atia, this speaks to insecurity and the threat to national security when people are losing money at the rate that they are mm. especially through embezzlement uh, obtaining money by false pretense then bank fraud who is safe what's your take on the crime report? Uh, <clears throat> thank you and uh, good morning the viewers I I certainly appreciate uh, what uh, Chimonges, yes, Chimonges has just put across. Um, the very point to start is to look at this report in, 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 in its very clear or correct context. Yeah. And uh, the very first one is that it is uh, a way that the police accounts for, for what they do. Mm. and uh, or for what they are supposed to do. My take in this whole thing is uh, I, would, I would like to start by reflecting on first of all what are the core what's the core mandate of the police and um, <clears throat> I think according to the 1994 Police Act uh, it singles out about four key elements. Mm. Uh, one is a uh, one is uh, public order, uh, the other is uh, preventing crime, the other is protecting people and their property, mm. uh, and then the fourth, I think, is the, you know, drawn within the constitutional mandate mm. of, uh, of, uh, of being a steward uh, towards uh, the attainment of democracy in a country because uh, the rule of law basically points towards that. Mm. Now when you look at it from that perspective, um, when this report came out, I, I, I received it with a bit of trepidation because I was asking myself, is this particular report any different from the, the other big, reports the they have been reports. giving? Mm. And, uh, my worry is the police has found uh, a particularly very easy way uh, in, 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 in presenting their accountability. And uh, that is the question of hiding behind the statistics of crime. These statistics is important. 
Mm. But this is not all that the police does. This is just a portion of, a portion what, of what the police we should is be supposed to do. Police, yeah. If you look at the other three mandates, the rule of law, uh, 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 protecting people and their property, which of course uh, comes through this uh, crime report. And then to situate it also, uh, you know the media sets an agenda. And I think this is basically a media-driven agenda. Oh. The media has pushed the police. You don't say. Yes, towards uh, a response mode over the years. So all the time, the police is running, mm. you know, to give this crime report. Mm. And you see, that is why when you look, when, when you start threshing this report, one of the key pointers the police is quick to put across is that there's reduced crime. But reduced crime of 1.5 mm. against all other parameters. Mm. You know, if, 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 if you subject this report to serious uh, research scrutiny, looking at elements of collaboration and all that, because there are other reports, for instance. Mm. So the whole issue of performance, uh, standards and performance of the police in general is lost, mm. especially when you're looking at the police or what the police does as a public good as a service because if you are to see this as a public good it's not just what the police is doing there's so many things i've enumerated there so many achievements they have got but the more serious question is how much do we appreciate what they are doing and uh, I have uh, been privy to see other reports yeah. uh, that particularly have tried to interrogate the standards of the police. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at issues like uh, uh, people interaction with the police, you know, because this is a service. And uh, the way the police is structured, there's almost, uh, a, a, you know, the people are, are, if for lack of a better word, you'd call mm -hmm. them customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the customer experience of people, I have seen surveys, the Afrobarometer, for instance, released a report in 2000, two, two thousand, last year, 2003, mm -hmm. and uh, they get, uh, the, the report is based on a, on a longitudinal study of yeah. surveys. They are yeah. using data ranging as far as 2005, and they clearly show you that, for instance, uh, when it comes to citizen interaction with the police or appreciation less and less people are running to the police because they don't have confidence in the police anymore and there are statistics that correlate this and those are the broader issues around the police that we should be mm. expected to see you know the police management responding to uh, Chamonges mentions the issue of corruption the issue of corruption in this country is central there is more than three, four, five credible reports out there mm. that show uh, the police's performance on corruption is, is really wanting. And not only in Uganda, even when you subject the test to the continent. I saw a report where they come number 34, mm. I think out of 39, mm. you know. Then also there are the other elements. The, the, the constitutional elements, the issues yeah. of uh, being custodian and working towards yeah. uh, democracy. The question of uh, being able to work with restraints. Yeah. Because uh, on, on, on a day-to-day on a -day basis, how do people interact with the police? Besides yeah. going to report crime, you are either meeting the traffic yeah. or for the more rural folks, Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you are going to the stations to interact with them in uh, community policing services and things like that. But uh, human rights, uh, a number of human rights people are, uh, are wary about uh, the level of police brutality. Mm. And that is documented, mm -hmm. including brutality towards journalists. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you see the question that bothers many is that these issues are documented are reported, but then you don't seem to see any sanctions mm -hmm. against the perpetrators that convince the people. Yeah. So in a nutshell, the, 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 the performance of any police is central to its relationship with the people. Mm -hmm. So the question of legitimacy 
becomes a huge problem. Mm. And if you look at this, I mean, these statistics comparatively, you find that the police has lost legitimacy amongst the people. Okay, so, that's interesting. You know? mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting, and it's a perspective mm. that is uh, worth mm. uh, looking into. But would you, for example, expect the police, Mr. Chamonges, mm. uh, to release a self-indicting document? Mm. No, I, I think that uh, they also they have a role that they are charged with, mm. and at all point they have to ensure that because um, uh, in in their service and in any documentation, it's for the world. It's not just for Uganda. That's right. And we have the we have the international uh, standard. We have the international expectations. Mm. But also, but also some of these things have um, a lot of um, impact in how we relate with uh, uh, um, with countries outside, mm. like. It could be even financial institutions in terms of um, in terms of how we can borrow resources from banks and that kind of stuff. Mm. And so, if the concerns to do with say human rights, mm. which the police have been indicted and been put uh, forward as one of the leading groups uh, as perpetrators, really, it doesn't come out very very clearly in the report. Mm. Yet it's a very key issue that um, that 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 they don't uh, pay attention. Uh, to absolutely. Yeah. And so. In, 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 in an ordinary setting, the police would be more in putting out what they have done as mm. opposed to the things that they have failed. Mm. And that's where I think that um, uh, th there's still a bit of an issue. And uh, at the start, I, uh, you, you mentioned uh, some, of the, uh, some of the prevailing crimes that the yeah, police highlight. Yeah. We, I think theft is one of those leading... Mm -hmm. um, petty, those petty leading, theft, and, yeah. uh, including phone snatching. Actually, phone, uh, phone snatching <laughs> in the report, I let's put... Uh, quantifies the mm. money close to 506 billion you know. of, the, of, of the of the phones stolen, which is such a huge. Apparently, when the phones are snatched, immediately guys are able to breach yes. the password walls ah. and then quickly mm. transact mobile money, Absolutely. and that also increases of the mm. amount of money mm. that is lost. Mm. But let's keep within uh, a context that mm. uh, uh, Dr. Atia has introduced. The director of public prosecutions, uh, Justice uh, Jen Francis Abodo, uh, says she is concerned about increase in convictions, which is due to intelligence-led and prosecution-led investigations. She's uh, calling for uh, a diametrical change, including aspects of dismissal of cases. She says it's high, and this is uh, kind of uh, bringing a bad image to the police and uh, to the prosecutors. So you would expect, for example, in this crime report, for the police to put at a very prominent end aspects of its capacity mm. to tackle crime mm. that should be what they should be looking at Absolutely. in other words mm. tell the government because you can tell us a lot about what crime what crimes are being committed mm. people are still like this and this and the other mm. you in other words what the police should do is to ask we are unable to tackle crime because of mm. this Mm. We've made some headway in these mm. particular aspects, mm. but these are our, mm. you know, mm. uh, obstacles or these are the bottlenecks we are facing. Mm. Uh, that would help? Yeah, in, in, in a sense, yes. Mm. Uh, and, and you see, maybe the other way to look at it is this way. Uh, you, 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 you sort of put this question across that uh, is, it, is, it, is it possible for the police to release a report that indicts Mm. And that's itself. Of course, of course um, not in normal life. Mm. Mm. But Chamonges uh, has said it all. We are not only accountable to ourselves. Mm. We are living in a global village today. The the, the dispensation around us is a is 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 a dispensation of international citizenship. Mm. We are all interconnected and intertwined because um, this report is being scrutinized by a lot of say would-be investors mm. uh, you know yeah the no big doubt. investors and these are some of the kind of work we do mm. they would be interested in understanding uh, the political stability mm. in a particular country before they bring in their money in fact one thing I know is that uh, some lawyers right now 
must be dissecting this for their investors. Uh, absolutely. In order to, to have uh, an overview mm. that should be able to lead to particular decision making. Mm. Yes. So, and, uh, and, 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 and you see the other problem I have with statistics. You know, <laughs> statistics can be interpreted mm. in any way, in any, in way. any form. Yeah. You know, for, for an issue that involves people relationship, mm. I'd be more interested mm. in a rather, you know, uh, qualitative mm -hmm. than quantitative, mm -hmm. you know, uh, approach to the study. Because I, I've really, I, I'm going to take time and look at it. I've not even seen the methodology. Mm -hmm. Because even the methodology should be able mm -hmm. to allow us see through whether the figures they are coming up with mm. uh, are actually yeah, no you the, the scholar in you <laughs> yes. they are, they are, they are, they are, they are you're into scholar mode yeah, no but um, <laughs> yeah. but the point i want to make yeah, is this right. that usually mm. the big question has mm. always been or the elephant in the room has been uh, there is an interesting latin word for it mm -hmm. uh k you know, confi confident, epos, confidente, uh, who, who watches over the police, who guards the mm. guard. Okay. You know, yeah. who guards the guard. Mm. So, in this instance, where you are faced with an indictment from the public, and I, 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 would, I would want the police to take this as serious, mm. because by the time a cross-country survey is showing that half of the population in a mm. country mm. are not showing confidence mm. in the service you're providing. Because remember, in, 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 in the philosophy in, 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 in the quote I've just made, who guards, who guards the guard, mm. can only be achieved through a prog progression and quantified method of legitimacy. Mm. That is the only way. Mm. Because this is a people process. Once we can have confidence then we are going to work with you now you see there's a correlation when you look at some of all these figures because just like the dpp uh puts it mm. if police is going to be able to crack sophisticated crime mm. particularly today where you are talking about uh, cyber crime you know because the the, the the actual thieves today are not uh, these ones snatching phones and running <laughs> yeah? mm. you saw the other day That's a report right. of a guy <laughs> who you know mm. says he withdrew mm. billions of shillings mm. just by a code mm. yeah, yeah sure we would like to know to, for us to have confidence in our police we would like to they don't need to tell us every little detail mm. but we want to know there are cyber capabilities today. Mm -hmm. We want to collaborate it with the syllabus. Mm -hmm. There is a huge pool of cyber experts in all these training institutions today. Mm -hmm. Are they tapping? Are they relating? You know, they could be doing this, mm -hmm. but it helps to talk about them because that is how you can drum support, mm -hmm. especially for a police force whose image is as dented as this, at least according to the studies uh -huh. that uh, are available and we are seeing, oh. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So intelligence relies on the people. Community policing mm -hmm. relies on the people. So the question of how this relationship is built mm -hmm. bottom up is very important. It will be crucial. Yes. All right. Talking about reducing criminality and uh, ensuring that the police has the capacity uh, to tackle, uh, crime itself is changing across the globe. Yeah. People are becoming more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. People are understanding uh, that uh, to be able to beat the system, you must get to know the system. Yeah. And uh, that's why the lizard in the Daily Monitor says most of these criminals are in ties. So on the set, we are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tolit uh, <laughs> has uh, yeah. a field day today, <laughs> uh, but of course that's on a lighter <laughs> side. Yes. But the sheer amount and pressure that mm. a force like ours, uh, given its capacity, comes under mm. when it tries to meet 
that particular obligation of fighting crime which is increasingly mm. sophisticated because when you look at 87 billion mm. shillings being taken from banks by mm. fraudsters mm. banks have uh, some of the most sophisticated mm. firewalls security mm. systems mm. in order to ensure money doesn't do what doesn't go yeah. but it mm. still does yeah, so you know mm. and that shows that the challenge is huge mm. Mm. i do not know whether there is uh, a specific effort from the forces side that you could know of mm. uh, given your good offices yeah. to ensure that this particular task is met head on yeah so i my interaction and generally looking at what the police have done mm. from inside there is definitely you can see that there is definitely commitment and th th there is desire mm. within the institution to address most of this challenge mm. but you know they will keep raising concerns to do with the capacities with yeah, the resources yeah, and some of the challenges and more focused towards the the, the, the challenges that they are, they are facing mm. to address it, addressing most of these things but I think that more important is, is, is to look at um, the, the challenges as it presents itself mm. because as you as you deal with each mm, on its own merits. Uh, absolutely as you say corruption has taken a totally different uh, it, it, it has metamorphosized really. Mm. How people do, how people, the corrupt undertake this exercise has changed completely. Actually, now the corrupt are very much inspired by the Bible. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and if you see, yeah. uh, even, even in government, you see that these days, budget, the corruption seems to be budget, like it's budgeted yeah. very clearly. And so trying to trace trace it specifically mm. you are likely not to to to, to you, find it you anywhere. won't find it you will you will you will resort to finding yourself uh, looking at uh, the normal uh, sort of exchange in terms of resources mm. and so things are really uh, are really taking very different shape including including the the the, 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 the theft uh, cases mm. but also more importantly is, is is in terms of the frustrations or approaches that people have adopted in frustrating some of these cases yeah. while while, while there are a number of most of the cases clearly indicate and the, the, the prosecutors of government largely would be in charge of ensuring that they prosecute these cases. Mm. There are deliberate efforts within the community and within the most of these perpetrators to frustrate this within the courts. Mm. You've seen that um, police and the judiciary, which are the responsible institutions, yeah. to enforce some of these some of these uh, matters that come up, they are highlighted to be the most corrupt institutions. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> they should be at, at, at the forefront, at the forefront at the, of the fighting maturing. crime. This, uh, so, so because their position, their advantage position, mm. should be able to address most of these things. And the, the ideal is if you look at the, the, pro, the, the progressive move towards, um, towards where we've come from, looking at the last year's report, this mm. year's report, and the previous reports, there should be an effort towards addressing most of this. And I think that's where, why the comparative, um, co uh, comparative analysis towards this report comes in. Mm. But the, the challenge that comes at the fore is, imagine you're responsible for enforcing, mm. yet you are listed as the most corrupt. You are listed it as compromises enforcement, mm. it compromises the quality of work that should be done, but also it compromises the state of the country, mm. because there are very serious things being raised here. Mm. So in a way, the criminal is briefing us about criminality that is <laughs> <laughs> if the police is consistently yeah. listed mm. as a yeah. corrupt force yes. it should be able for example to also dig into some of those cases within the force and mm. highlight them in the report Absolutely. i don't know whether your reading of the report mm. uh, has anywhere that you have landed on where the police actually acknowledges that mm. corruption within the force mm. is there and mm. these are the cases that have been reported is mm. it there uh, have you dug deep? I haven't. It, and no, uh, I, I think it, not in this report per mm. se. I have not dug deep, but um, but I think like some of the issues we are raising, mm. the police is actually beginning to respond mm. to some of them. Okay. Like for instance, there is uh, the, 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 the there is a project. Mm. I don't know whether it is still ongoing on uh, reform mm. and accountability mm. within the police. You saw that uh, in. Uh, 2022, mm. I think that's when they dismissed uh, 153 officers yeah. uh, that were found gulpable. Mm. And, uh, and moves like that are certainly welcome mm. because that is important mm. in, in terms of building public confidence. Um, and they ought to do more and more of that. Mm. They have now introduced, the police has now introduced uh, the disciplinary courts. Mm. Uh, I think in, in all the, the district police uh, 
uh, units. Mm. These uh, the, 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 the ones that work as internal yes. uh, justice mechanisms yes. within the force itself. Yes. Doesn't that compromise the greater justice no, law? No, 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 not really. Because mm. the, this, the, I mean, we need to, we also need to give it up to the men in uniform. Ah. The, the, the job they do mm. is, a, is, is not an ordinary job. Mm. It's an intricate job because, I mean, you are chasing the criminal. Mm. Uh, by end of the day, you can get gulpable, but you don't want to be uh, held in the same cell mm. with this criminal. So the, the police needs to enjoy some kind of special path mm. uh, in, in its management, and that allows it to be able to do its work independently and without interference. Mm. So those courts are, are certainly welcome. The only question is that, uh, are they serious about the courts, mm. you know? Is the necessary investment being given, being given yeah. the the investment the, the, the seriousness? Mm. Because again, tomorrow you don't want to hear that these courts are being used mm. uh, to discriminate mm. eh, uh, upon uh, 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 you know upon other people. Mm. So just like any other court, the standards of this court mm. should be held high. Okay. Mm. You know that 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 is important. But also, you see, the other thing that I wanted to point out, which is also a, legit, a, a legitimacy question, and, and, and that loophole is within the, the, the Police Act, but also within, uh, or rather, international instruments mm. demand. Mm. Because there is a certain code of conduct, mm. international code of conduct, expected of the police. I mean, you've heard we have uh, contributed police, our police officers have gone to peace missions. Yeah, sure. Uh, and there they are subjected to a very high code of conduct standard. Mm. And they meet it and perform it, which means they can do it. So here. Yes, mm -hmm. because we've not had any police officer who has gone out and, and been dismissed, mm -hmm. you know, for, for wanting code of conduct. Mm -hmm. So if they get out there and do it, why can't they come mm -hmm. and perform it and here? the same officers. You know? So that means the police has opportunity to improve mm. its standards. But of course, one I saw, and the, which I saw in another report, and I think the police need to find time, particularly their public relations uh, units, and mm. uh, to, 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 to start responding to some of these uh, studies being conducted. Because, you see, it is incremental, and mm. it builds. Mm. And you know, Publicity, any publicity, good or bad, is publicity. So if you're not responding, mm. then we don't seem to get this conversation. Mm. Because, like, for instance, if you see the police at the moment, by and large, given our contextual issue, mm. we have had these issues of, you know, the demonstrations of the opposition. Uh, we have had the protests. The issue of public order law management yeah. is a very contentious issue in this country mm -hmm. whereas the constitution is saying something else you know the the, the lawyers are arguing something else and the police, the police its is interpreting its own law mm -hmm. you know so you find that the issue of brutality the issue of excessive force always come to the fore of those discussions mm -hmm. because there are instances where for instance the, one of the characters of Ugandan police is that there is so much presence of the gun mm -hmm. Mm. There's actually a report that shows between 2008 to 2022, the police and the other forces have killed mm. up to 100 Ugandans. These are people charged mm. with looking after mm. the, you, same people. the same people that they yeah. are killing. Now, situations can warrant mm. because we've had explanations because uh, some of the some of the criminal gangs mm. okay. are, 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 are actually also armed. But I think by and by we should know where the guns should be mm. and where the guns shouldn't, shouldn't be. be because the police certainly is a civic force. Mm. All right, gentlemen, that should be able to form uh, pretty much our discussion uh, going forward. I'm going to have to go for a break, but uh, when I return, we shall speak guns proper because robberies and murders at the bar of the gun have increased and 
we have reports that some of the officers' guns have been found to be used in uh, some of these uh, uh, as, uh, incidents of uh, crime. Whether the system is able to track and uh, go and find out exactly why the officer's gun was found to be used by another person remains to be seen. After the break, we shall be delving into that and a little bit, a little bit more with regard to the annual crime report that was released yesterday. Stay with us. at NTV. Welcome back. I'm glad you're still with us here on Morning at NTV. You are watching and are right in the deep end of the Kickstarter where we are discussing the annual crime report 2023 that was released yesterday by the Uganda Police Force. Now, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there, including the statistics that you should be able to imbibe on so you can understand exactly what is happening across the country. But I would like to interest myself and of course my panelists on the social aspect of crime what are the drivers of crime especially within uh, uganda and uh, especially urban areas i must say because according to the information i have here areas including choga rizi aswa east choga renzori west kigezi uh, kampala metropolitan south these are the areas that seem to register more crime than others of course when there is an urban center that's where the money is most people would be wanting to find or have a piece of the cake there but let me return to my uh, guests uh, dr tolita tia security expert and uh, scholar as well as uh, timothy chemongis analyst and of course uh, you have an understanding of these matters more than uh, i have in the past two years so to speak but let me understand before we come to the social aspect and what are the drivers of crime the incidence of uh, gun handling mm -hmm. and uh, gun ownership in the country. Uh, some of us do not understand mm -hmm. who is supposed to hold a gun, mm -hmm. when and how. You see a herdsman mm -hmm. with uh, 20, 35 heads of cattle mm -hmm. with a pistol. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you don't ask why. Mm -hmm. And then you find a police officer mm -hmm. who is manning an installation mm -hmm. uh, has a rusting AK-47 mm -hmm. and you're like okay who's supposed to be better armed than the other what is the legal framework right now when it comes to gun ownership because most of the guns that are cited in incidents of crime happen to be registered with the officers mm -hmm. themselves meaning they are complicit mm -hmm. what's yeah, your take uh, absolutely so there's this common phrase the police knows the thief or the, po <coughs> the police knows the thief and the thief knows the police <laughs> These are people who are in the same area of business. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's the same if uh, you, you are at NTV and an alternative media. Mm -hmm. They know each other and they know who, who, who is doing what at any point in time. Yeah. And so more often than not, you'll see there is that, uh, there is that complacency, but there's sort of interaction that the two um, have. Mm. Of course, not all of them. There's a section of, uh, section of, the, of, the, of, of, of men in uniform. Mm. And so you, many times, uh, even without just extending the, the, the gun, there is the extension of grace to allow the, the, the thieves to exercise. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even notifying them that by the way today we shall be operating on this area. Uh, please, please uh, let your patrol cars not abs pass. Absolutely. So that kind of thing. So there is that. There is that. And, and that. Again, By the way, I should do a disclaimer. I'm not aware of that. There's uh, <laughs> some of the reports I see and hear yeah. people saying on social absolutely. media. Yeah. I have absolutely no mm -hmm. evidence mm -hmm. on the police mm -hmm. alerting criminals mm -hmm. of by allowing them to operate at a certain point of the city mm -hmm. at any one point in time. That, absolutely. And that's true. And um, while the, the, there may not be a specific uh, uh, there, may sp there may be a specific evidence to point towards that direction. Mm -hmm. Indicators, indicators. When they find a, when they find um, a, a, a thief with a gun that is registered under a police officer, mm. it can be by mistake. Yeah. It can only be an indicator. It speaks to collusion. Yeah, it speaks to collusion. So it's mm. just an indicator. So we may not have a clear evidence. Mm. And so is to is to say that. Um, even the manner in which uh, registration but also acquisition of these guns uh, is concerned is an area that we may need to look more further. Mm. Because the current legal framework provides that um, any Ugandan mm. who of interest or has reason mm. or has cause as to why he should be given or licensed with a to gun, carry a gun, they apply that to, 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 to the, to the uh, IGG. Mm. And upon application, uh, 
it will be subjected to scrutiny and if it's valid then it's granted because of the of the critical nature of the, these firearms mm. and so i think that um there, there have been individuals who who, who have been given or granted that, that access to these guns and have misused it. And so speaking specifically, specifically on the question of, of, of the crime rate, I think there is need and there is need for this continuous engagement between mm. the community and, 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 and uh, the police because at the end of the day, security is a community affair and the people are the center of it. Mm. But also more importantly is to ensure that uh, our police officers um, are in a way equipped with more capacity and more, because this, this goes to the spirit really and, and the character of the poli some of the police officers. Mm. And addressing that, of course, is putting, putting in place the punitive measures that can address that, but also continuous engagement and continuous incitation to our police officers. Mm. Once we can put that, then that can go a long way in addressing most of these things. Otherwise, um, in, 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 in a sense where uh, th th there is a bit of, uh, a bit of uh, exchange in terms of money or any other valid um, currency mm. to the police, that affects, aff affects enforcement. And even that goes to some of these uh, traffic, uh, traffic offenses mm. where we pay our way uh, on the road to cause yeah. an accident. Uh, notwithstanding the police officer sees the car is not in a good state mm. or maybe I'm in uh, I'm intoxicated and I can pay my way to to that that. Is right. absolutely you, I, I like what the analogy you use pay my way into an accident yeah that is very interesting <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, I think you must be able to internalize that let me let you get it straight when you get 20,000 Ghana shillings and you bribe a traffic officer and they let you off the hook you've just bought your way to death that's what it means mm -hmm. yes and it should be something that should mm -hmm. shock mm -hmm. uh, people's conscience all right we are entering the final bend of uh, this discussion the social aspect of what is driving crime unemployment is one thing that is always conveniently thrown at us people don't have jobs so they'll begin to think a little bit more on how to survive i think it's a valid one but i think there must be other aspects that we should pay attention to do you have an idea <clears throat> yeah, um, I think there, there isn't any other way to look at this other than, you know, looking at uh, uh, security, insecurity mm. in the lens of, uh, you know, uh, peace, security and development. Okay. You know, they, they are sort of, it's sort of a symbiotic, you know, relationship mm. where you have uh, low... Uh, low security mm. I mean okay or the other way low development uh, there's going to be a tendency of higher security mm. insecurity and uh, and also restlessness mm. but um, I don't think that uh, w we really should be looking for answers where they are not there uh, these things are on the table okay I mean for instance I I'm just wondering uh, how much uh, uh, research information the mm. police consumes, mm. uh, particularly from uh, you know interlinked interlinked agencies. Mm. Let's let's start with urban crime because mm. like c the cosmopolitan areas have showed uh, you know higher levels of crime. If you look, I've been looking at um, the UBOS, mm. the Uganda Bureau of Statistic Reports, especially their poverty index mm. for the last uh, probably five, six years or so. And there is a clear indication that there is an unprecedented rural urban migration. Mm. People are moving People towards the, the village, centers yeah. in the droves mm. and basically coming to look for livelihood. That's right. Uh, Kampala, they used to call it a, a town of seven hills. Mm. I don't think it is seven hills now. Mm. It is seven hills and I don't know how many <laughs> slums or the inner cities. So in that kind of environment, yeah. you, 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 would, you would definitely uh, or most likely begin to have mm. this kind of, uh, of, 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 of nature, increased nature of activities. Mm. Then there is the other one that I want to, to try and draw our minds to. Yeah, very quickly. I have also come to now understand that there is what in the legal terms they, they refer to as recivitism. Recivitism mm. is a, an incidence of where somebody has gone into prison, mm. you know, 
probably even served their term, mm. come out and repeat the same repeat, yeah. mm. crime. So I think the whole infrastructure, you know, law and order infrastructure needs to be interrogated. Because prisons are supposed to be correction centers. Mm. But if people are going in there to probably learn more crime, or even just get hardened. Mm. Eh? And you know, when you relate that to, the, to, to our current demographics, we have people very under, young. very young people, very young people who are going you know, to prison. energetic and, you know, and sometimes because of the levels of poverty and the structures, you mm. cannot separate. They are being remanded with mm. the hardcore criminals and mm. all these things. So for me, the point is that uh, our entire law order system must needs be. to be interrogated vigorously mm. and the investment that it deserves should be given to it. Okay. Dr. Tolita Tia, security expert, many thanks. I'm afraid I'm going to have to end it here, yeah, but yeah. we've been emboldened by the perspectives mm. you've mm. offered us in understanding the trend in crime, but most importantly, under what mechanisms some of the things that we are reading in the annual crime report do happen thank you timothy chimogis associate director center for policy analysis and parliament watch uganda now let's go to my man ivan k walinyolo who is going to speak to us on the efficiency of bossy power plant of course uh, in recent days you must have noticed that there is uh, frequent uh, load shedding and that is down to the fact that uh, we are in a contradiction of abundancy and the scarcity of power. But those are questions that we can uh, seek answers, especially when it comes to the availability of power plants. Uh, good morning, Ivan.